head of product, Matan. Matan, come on down. And he's from San Francisco, so I think this is your first time wearing a collared shirt in a long time. I think it's the first time I wore it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Joe, for the warm intro. Um, <laughs> so a couple of days ago, I get a, this uh, weird call from my mom, um, which for a lot of us, that's a moment of anxiety. Um, and she tells me, have you ever heard of this guy called uh, Sam Altman? I'm like, yeah, mom, I, I, I know who this guy is. And, and keep it in mind, my mom's 70, still working, has her own uh, private architecture office. Um, she told me, yeah, he was just visiting Israel, and I heard about this thing called ChatGPT, and I started using it for my marketing. And I was like, huh, okay, interesting. Um, if this actually works, yeah. So... I was like, okay, that's that's cool, mom. That's good to hear. And it's like I was excited for her for finding this thing that we are all excited by. Um, why does this matter? Because if my mom uses it, probably all of your employees and yourselves are using it. And as we started looking and digging into this, we saw that 86% of employees think they need to get trained about with ChatGPT. 14 percent actually get trained. And 70% are actually using it in their home and not telling their bosses that they're doing it. So by using it at home, they're probably using it for private purposes or taking your data from your company and using it on ChatGPT and bringing it back in. <laughs> Sorry. On top of that, one um, in four Americans is using ChatGPT and around over 40% of employees using it in general. So this is like obviously everywhere it's very different so to summarize this my mom is using it <laughs> your employees are using it and your consumers are using it so at this point there's like real expectation for all of us in our products to do something with this so as part of before we got to this ai practice we started playing around with these models in-house and spend qu quite a bit of time running these fast hackathons and this fast experience of explorations on actually our own product with uh, using our own methodologies that now we're exposing out for everyone here. And I wanted to focus on two specific use cases out of the 10 plus that are mentioned here. So if, if anyone here has used a team before, um, the way it works, a client comes in, they go uh, with one of our uh, amazing BD people for a great call where they do an intake, really understand the problem, the domain space, the issues they have, and then they help them generate what we call a team spec or a mission. This is a, like the process as it is today um, is, is takes time because like, you need to understand the client needs. What we've done is we've taken some of the infrastructure that already exists today as part of the sales calls, which is mainly using Gong and, and the call itself, and using the outputs from Gong and running it through the, um, in this case, OpenAI models, we actually extract the information in the call that's relevant uh, to do that mission spec. Now, this is interesting because by removing the need of the salesperson or the BD person to take notes, to summarize, they're actually more in the zone with the client, understanding their needs, their problems, and, and, and the expectations of, of the mission. Um, what we've seen by doing this is Prior to this, uh, a spec from the call to actually being put on the platform would take about three days. Because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to understand the needs and then rewrite them and so on and so forth. After this, it's 10 minutes. So this is, means that this is 10 minutes that we get the mission faster on the platform. We get it faster in front of our builders. We free the time of BD team to then go do prospecting. Now, this is still... Um, it's not fully rolled out across the company. All of these projects, the emissions and projects that we mentioned are still in the works and being tested, but this is being used by some of the salespeople that are actually in the room today. The second thing we've done is, and I'm really excited by, and, and we've already started sharing this with some of our existing builders, is application scoring. The idea there is once that mission comes in after the, the Gong pipeline and so on, our builders see them like a marketplace and they request to join a mission. 
some of our most talented builders are also quite like not excited in writing an application. I, I know I am not, but it's required because as the company that works with us, they have all these questions, these needs, this information they want to know, are you the right person, and so on and so forth. What we've done um, is we've, we take this information and help them score their application, but by score, it's not just by one to a hundred, but it also gives them inputs and feedback on the score itself and how to improve it. So talk more about your skills. Do you have relevant experiences and, and so on. And so far the feedback, we've been using this internally on our own teams as they uh, get those um, requesting to request to join our applications to our, to our missions. But we've, we are slowly starting to expose it to our builders. And there's reasons why we want to do this slowly because you know there's biases and so on and so forth. But but the way we've done this is essentially is we've taken all of the hundreds of applications in the past, we fine-tuned the model, and now we're starting to roll this out to our builders. And and and, and again, the, the feedback was a lot of excitement because they want to work, they want to be on exciting missions, and they don't want to be frustrated by like submitting multiple ones and not going through the, the process. So these are two examples. Two examples of missions that we have done. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I'm here to answer. All right, actually, we're gonna we're gonna keep you up here, um, and we actually have we have a hot seat for Q and A. It's hot seat because it's red. Um, and we'd like to invite anyone uh, who has a question to come up. One of the complaints we had last time is that we had people asking questions in the audience and everyone at home couldn't hear what they were saying and no one repeated the questions. So we're going to try it a little differently this time. Um, so I'm going to hand the, phone, the mic to Matan. So the question was, what is the most challenging technical um, problem we face when we build uh, either of these, either of these um, products? So the challenge was not actually on a technical basis because the beauty, and to some extent, of these models and the way they're packaged is that, um, and why you see all these like large companies moving so quickly is because it's it's quick. The challenge was, uh, I would say, on the application scoring, and still is, is concerns, rightfully so, by by some of the builders, which is like, well, I'm European, we don't like to talk ourselves up, would this hurt my score, and and things like that, which is like, how are you training these models to actually give me the feedback? So this is actually a feedback I got with from one of the members of the community the other day. And we're like, you know, this is exactly why we're not rolling this out to everyone yet. We want to test it. We want to make sure that it's not like noisy and, and to work with the community of, of builders that we have to really make sure that this this delivers on the promise. Um, one of the things that I actually didn't mention, we're actually doing the very similar experience on the company side because knowing how to pitch a mission to the community is actually extremely important. So it goes both ways and those guidance that we're we're giving and we're testing but that i would say would be the most challenging part on how to roll this out in a way that doesn't freak out the community this mic works now any other questions you know what you're right up front so i can just bring it to you hi thanks for the talk uh i work in forensics and thinking about some other uh types of computer applications where you have to prove right in the court of law or show your work and thinking about ai where the models are trained is there a framework that you've developed or worked with with your clients for showing how um it got to a result in a way that could be understood uh and scrutinized yeah that, that's a great question the quick answer is no uh, <laughs> I think that is basically this is a moving target, and and like this is changing so fast, as Rafael said, 
that we don't have a good answer for that yet. I don't know if you all saw this recently. There was this lawyer that used GPT to write the brief, forgot to take out the part that says, I'm GPT-4, I can't you know, write a brief. But also, he used GPT for quoting other supposed court cases, which were completely bogus. Um, so the cheeky answer would be, like, thing you write or generate, you, someone should go validate it. As in, like, even if I you write an essay, there should be an element of validation and seeing that the court cases actually exist. But that's like a, a bit of a cop out. The real answer is that no, we don't know yet. And and there's some companies that are working on this problem for sure. Um, outside of A Team, I mean. Um, and it it is a hard problem for sure. Yeah. For a follow up question, are there any large language models or other you know generative AIs that do have footnotes or anything like is that a feature yeah. that's been developed so a yes bard does the google model i think um so it, it tells you where it it pulls the information from even gpt when it does the it depends on the plugins but when it does the online like you expose it to get access to online stuff it will give you quote unquote footnotes but um but yeah, I mean, this is very much in the early days, but this was one of the big selling points for Google, which is when they opened their model, which was like, we don't just keep it in this closed chamber. We use our superpower, which is search, and then we tell you where from. Yeah. So, so basically, if you're gonna use those models for court, you should probably use BART for now, because <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks for this talk as well. Um, so I guess there's there's kind of two parts to my question. The first is is around privacy, and I think you know going back to that um, that reference about the waves and the flotillas, I feel like OpenAI is like the submarine um, <laughs> where they're kind of like underneath everything, controlling all of these models more or less, or like the for it, um, and uh, just kind of like if you can allay any concerns that people may have there. Uh, number one, and then the second thing. Um, it's just the term AI. I feel like a lot of what we're experiencing now, and you might already know where this is going, is just like predictive analytics. And I wouldn't consider that necessarily artificial intelligence. And so I'm kind of just curious where you sit on that fence and like how far are we from like moving towards like true consciousness of AI? And like, yeah. So I'll start with the second. I think um, Joe and Tori here are marketing people, so they can walk you through why they keep it calling it an AI. But But joking aside, there, there's actually people in this room, especially the base 10 team, that I think would be interesting for you to talk with, given their work with some of the um, cutting edge companies in this space. Um, and, and they can, you know, they're really building the infrastructure for these companies, not like on the model level, but everything around it. And so they kind of get their hand on the pulse of, of where and how fast this is developing. Um, you, your statement is also, you know, I remember when I was, b before 18, I, I spent a lot of years in, in fintech, and um, we used to joke that every time a CEO would say, well, they actually mean, st like, st you know, statistics. But, but yeah, I mean, it's true, but, like, that's part of, you package it, and, yeah, I mean, Log logistic regressions is based, you know, that's at most ML, at least in, in FinTech for fraud, for example. But it's, no one wants to hear that when you raise money, they wanna hear ML, right? Um, and to some extent, those models have developed over the years and they're much more sophisticated than they, than they were, let's say five, seven, 10 years ago. Um, and they changed the way FinTech works across the board. Uh, let's be very clear, the way, the reason you can get a credit card in two minutes and so on is, is because of those models. Um, on your first question around privacy, so, so I think there's two layers to it on the consumer side and on the, uh, I would say the company slash enterprise side. Um, on the consumer side, now if you use those those, those models, whether it's uh, Anthropic or or, um, or OpenAI and, and, and such, you can toggle on and off the training component and say, I don't want you to share my information across, you know, the ecosystem. Whether or not, you know, that actually happens, that's, I believe it does, but like, that's the same way that you would be 
why Google has my information or Facebook or Twitter and, and it's the similar. Uh, I think the, the bigger or to me the more interesting question, because like I assume as a consumer, my information is everywhere already. But I think the really interesting is the, on the corporation level. Um, and that's a real problem with a lot of these foundational models, especially the non-open sourced ones, because there's no clear indication if my company's data is not cross pollinating the ecosystem. Now, it's very clear that they will solve this problem, or if not already. I mean, Microsoft as the player that, you know, no one knows how to sell to enterprise like Microsoft, like understands that world very well and will do what is needed to be done to resolve this privacy issue. Um, and they're all working on it. It's not a, it's not a secret. Like a, OpenAI came out, I think in March and said, we work on an enterprise model, enterprise grade security, so on and so forth. So they understand that there's that need and that concern. Um, but like everything in product development, you know, you can start out of the gate with all the functionality. But I also agree with you that they, to Joe's and Raphael's point, no one expected this to blow up the way it did. So like, uh, if you would have asked me in November that it, when it came out, will my mom be using this in, in May? Or I would be like, no, there's no way. Cause like, cause like these models were out there. I don't know, like, um, they were playing like video games and beating like like professional video gamer teams and like GPT-3 was there for a while and, all, and what actually got it to blow up is that. So these things like we just, it's hard to keep track.